Welcome to Community Church and our Children's Discipleship Online Program. I am Miss Pam, and I want to invite you and your friends to join us as we spend another week looking at how Jesus appeared to Mary, his disciples, and friends after he had risen from the dead. Right now, I want you to imagine that you are at the Children's Worship Room door, and I'm going to greet you just as if you were here. Christ has risen. And your response is, Christ has risen indeed. Last week, I read to you from the book of Acts, from chapter 1, verses that told us that Jesus was going to spend 40 days after he had risen from the dead on earth before he ascended to heaven. During that time, he was preparing his disciples and friends for the time when he would return to God in heaven. Our stories for today cover part of that time. Our lessons will be coming to us from the Bible, from children and worship material, and from the story. Before we begin today, though, let's pray. Father God, thank you for the time we get to spend hearing about your son, Jesus. Thank you that we can hear the same stories over and over, and yet we still learn something new about you. Thank you, Father, that you have given us the time and this way of hearing your word. Please open our minds and our hearts to take in today's lesson. Father, help us recognize the love that you have extended to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us take in that love and help us to give out that love to others. We pray all of this and everyone said, Amen. This is our first scene, and it is titled, Jesus is Risen, The Road to Emmaus. It comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. This is the season of Easter, and the season of Easter is kind of like the seasons that we know, like spring, summer, and fall but it is the season of Easter. And it's when we celebrate the mystery that Jesus died and that God brought him back to life again. This is the road to Emmaus. Two of Jesus's friends were traveling to this road. They were going back home. They were very sad Jesus had died. They had hoped that he would be king. Why did Jesus have to die, they said. Why did Jesus die? Then someone came along and walked with them. They traveled on to their home. And when they got there, it looked as though the man was going to just keep on going. And they said to him, just stay with us. And the man did. And he actually went into their house and he picked up the bread and he broke the bread after he had blessed it. And then he gave it to them. And that was when they knew it was Jesus. It was Jesus who had broken the bread and had given them this bread. He was, he was alive. Jesus was alive. Jesus had risen from the dead. And then Jesus left. They were so happy that Jesus was alive. They could hardly wait to get back to Jerusalem and tell the disciples they couldn't wait to tell them, Jesus is alive. He is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. That's our story for now. And it is the time when you can turn the video off and you can talk about what you remember. You can tell the entire story if you want to, or you can just tell the parts that you remember. But make sure you say it out loud. And once you have done that, go ahead and talk about our three main questions. What did Jesus' disciples or friends do? 
What did Jesus do? And what does God want us to understand from this story? You also might want to stop and write down your I wonder questions and see if any of them match the ones that we have written for you. Hi boys and girls, Miss Sarah here. I'm going to read scene two. Um, it comes to us directly from the Bible. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. So if you have your Bible there, you can grab it and follow along with me. <clears throat> now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those of them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So now stop the video and talk about all the things you can remember that happened in this scene. Talk about what was interesting to you or maybe even what you remember hearing before. Be sure to say your thoughts out loud. Once you have done that, talk about our three regular questions. What did the disciples and or friends do? What did Jesus do? And what does God want us to take away from the scripture? Take a minute to write down your I wonder questions for this scene. We'll be ready to begin the next scene when you're done. Hey boys and girls, scene three comes to us from the story for children and it's called The Reunion with Jesus. It comes to us from John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. It had been an upsetting few days. Jesus had been arrested, treated badly, and then crucified. The disciples were worried that the leaders might come after them next. 
they might be in trouble for believing in Jesus. They kept the doors locked so the soldiers and leaders couldn't get to them. The disciples argued and discussed Mary Magdalene's remarkable news. I saw Jesus raised from the dead, she had told them over and over. As they talked, Jesus suddenly appeared in the locked room. The disciples were shocked. The last time they had seen him, he was dead. Peace be to you, Jesus said. He showed them the nail scars on his hands. He showed them the side of his body that had been cut by the soldier's sword. When the disciples realized the person in front of them really was Jesus, they were very happy. And Jesus was happy to be with his friends again. He gave them a special blessing and told them he had a big job for them to do. I want you to tell everyone about the blessing that I came to give, forgiveness and life eternal for everyone who believes in me. Soon, the Father will send the Holy Spirit to help you and give you strength and power, Jesus explained. Though the disciples didn't understand everything, they understood that Jesus had done what he said. He had died and was alive again. The disciples knew they had been chosen to do an important job. And God's message to us, My son will soon leave the earth and return to heaven to be with me. But in his place, I will send my spirit to fill you with strength and power and the courage to tell everyone the good news that Jesus has saved the world. <clears throat> So boys and girls, stop the video and take a few minutes to talk about what you heard. Talk about what you already knew or about something new. Make sure you're saying your comments out loud. After you have done that, take a few minutes to talk about our three questions. What did the disciples and friends do? What did Jesus do? And what does God want us to understand about this story? Also. Don't forget to write down your I wonder questions. You can talk about those with your family and your friends this week. Turn off the video now and return for our closing when you're ready. So that's our lesson for this week. And I just wondered, Sarah, what questions you may have wondered about as you prepared and did the lesson this week. I was just wondering how the disciples felt being in the room and with and Jesus suddenly appearing when the door was locked. That must have been very surprising for the disciples. Yeah, I wondered if when the two men were walking back from Emmaus or walking to Emmaus, I wondered why they didn't recognize Jesus. He was walking right there with them and talking with them. So I wondered about that. And then I wondered, how Mary felt when they met with her and she had seen Jesus and now they had too, they must have had quite the stories to tell. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions you were wondering about? Oh, I just kind of wondered how the disciples doubted Jesus, that he had to show them the, his scars in his hand and the scars on his side and uh, wondered why their faith was so weak and why they didn't believe Jesus. He had to prove it to them. Those are great questions, and I'm hoping that all of you are writing down your questions, too, because they might be like ours or they might be different. So that's it for this week, but before we close, let's pray. Father, we can see your hand in every part of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Help us to see your hand in our own lives. As we go through this different kind of life, we can almost feel how the disciples must have felt knowing that Jesus would go to heaven and not be with them here on earth. Maybe the way they felt is sort of like the way we feel today. We know there are a lot of uncertainties in our lives, just as there were in their lives, but we know God that, and that is the one constant that we have. We are always, you are always there for us, and we thank you for that, Father. 
In his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.